I'm Baby Sparta from 97th Street. If you go look at any recording credits I had prior to meeting the G-Unit people, it just says Spider. I really cannot tell you where the low shit came from officially, other than that's what they perceive me as by maybe hearing me say my name is Spider Low. Everybody from my hood is a low. So if your name is Davey, Brian, Bumpy, you Bumpy Low, you Davey Low, and perhaps them hearing us talk and just overhearing it, I don't know. I looked up and Loke was on the last name of mine. But I'm actually Baby Spider. I'm Spider 3. I want to go back to the, your whole comment about you, words and being good with words. And I was wondering, does that go back to Catholic school or private never, school or theology? Private school, definitely. And I'm not necessarily sure if the fact that it was private, that plays such a part more so than it was um, Caucasian based. And the vocabulary that was utilized was the correct vocabulary on a consistent basis. So you know how in our relaxed environment, we resort to slang and we utilize that no matter what our actual capability of speaking is amongst our own, we just kind of naturally dumb it down. <laughs> when you speak with the Roman, you speak as Roman. It's that nature of things. So I've also, I've always had to, I've naturally stayed more well versed in my actual environment because I was overexposed or more so exposed to people who didn't talk like us. So yeah, some people say talking white, but then it's really talking the talking correct Talking right, way. you know. And if it's talking white, that's cool, but it's correct. And it's yeah. not correct as far as has nothing to do with your character or your integrity. It's just the way that this language was structured to be spoken. Yeah. So if you understand it and choose to say it improper because you feel more comfortable, that's fine if you get your point across. But the problem is when you think you're saying it correctly and you're thinking you're saying it the way it was intended to be said and you're saying it wrong, that's when I have a problem. You and I, based on your brand, I had a perception of who you might be. When we spoke on the phone, because of our dialect, the perception changed. And we, we both developed a whole other appreciation for one another. So it goes a long way out here in society as far as being able to communicate with other people outside of small boxes. I don't even appreciate how in hip hop it seemingly I've been put in such a small crip box when as much of a crip I have been or I am or have become or experienced, I'm so far more than that. That was an easy accomplishment. I'm a father. I'm very proud of being that. I am six times the father that I am a crip. You're connected to two videos I know that went viral. And this we're talking about 10 years ago when there weren't a whole lot of viral videos. I wasn't sure if you wanted to um, get into any of that. but I, Perhaps you probably mentioned it once for somebody got knocked out. Yeah. I don't know if he was knocked out. No, no, no. Let's you know, say. you kind of give him a break by saying he was yeah. knocked out. I say he was knocked down. He got right back on his feet. Right, and did not proceed fighting. True. That's what we saw, and it's not like I was I'm, I have ever been a cameraman. I wasn't interested in capturing any footage. I was present at that incident for a whole other purpose. I had a camera crew with me, such as yourself today. I had a relationship with no one over there that would warrant me feeling like I was obligated to keep this shit a secret. These were casual relationships that I had established in very shaky circumstances. This nigga was beefing with his brother, inviting me over there out of spite. That's not something I'm cherishing. He got, he did some whole shit. Somebody else caught it on camera, brought it to my attention. I was currently involved in social media. And bam, what else I'm gonna do? Shit, yeah, look what I got. This shit on HD, crispy, clear. I was surprised to see him go out like a hoe. That was shocking to me. I, I don't have no obligation to hide that. So I did participate in letting the world see that. I enjoyed that. You know, niggas, the bit going viral wasn't even a term. And at the last minute prior to releasing it, it was something called rendering that had to be done to release footage back then. And it was a pretty lengthy process. And I remember waiting on the footage to render, and at the last minute asking the renderer, was it possible to play the beautiful world record while you release it? And at the last minute, he stopped it from rendering, meaning I had to wait twice as long. And he put the beautiful world record, but he only got dropped once. So it was my idea. I want the whole record to play. So I don't care how many times he got to get dropped, let it keep going. So that's why when you saw it, it just kept showing it because I wanted people to hear my whole song. And I got 100,000 views in one day way back then. We yeah. woke up from three views 
The next day it was like a hundred thousand. Like blew our mind. Like the fuck. So were you over there to shoot a music video? With Beautiful him? world to remix. He invited me. What happened was I was going down Wilmington one day. Looked over in Brazil. It was a crowd of niggas like bunched up for a picture. So I stopped. It was glasses Malone, bunch of niggas. They were shooting a video. So I'm telling them like, damn, I'm shooting a video tomorrow or next week for Beautiful World the remix. It already had been played on the radio with the homie Papa Smurf from Denver Lane. Shout out P Smurf. He a blood on rapping. They was familiar with the record. So the fact that Face was beefing with his brother, he immediately was like, shoot it over here, shoot it over here. All right. So I came over there to get some footage for the video shoot for, the, for, that, for that video. But I'm gonna tell you what happened to the Beautiful World Part Two video. Y'all never saw it. Um, shout out Big Trap, Trap LA Crash. Had to tell me um, after um, purchasing that camera and doing all that shooting, we had a shootout and all that. All we had was the B-roll footage. So that video was compiled of B-roll footage because all the actual great footage, when the P2 cars that just came out, he was fucking up, thought he was saving them and wasn't saving them. So we went through a whole video shoot and did it like shooting blanks. So the video, we shot over there, but we don't have none of the shots. See, the, you see original remix, you hear on the, on the blue record, you hear it say remix. The reason why it was a remix initially is because the first time I can remember having Piper, Snoopy Blue, and Smurf in the studio together um, was the first time going through beats I went to record the Beautiful. Not because that was the plan, it was because the beat play, I had a few of those lyrics already in my sidekick, and to me that made a merit. So Snoopy Blue sitting in the, in the studio, cuz. I'm finna do this blue shit. Your name's Snoopy Blue. Right to this. Um, I wrote my verse. After I wrote my verse and laid it, Snoopy Blue wasn't really feeling that day. He ain't wrote shit. But because, you know, it's like next man up. Piper wanna get on the song. Piper jumped up, said a verse. Didn't have nothing to do with Blue. And then at the last line, he said, Blue the fool, 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 and just said some shit. So we was making mixtapes at the time, just putting shit out. We had kind of put that shit out. It's just a verse with me rapping one verse, Piper rapping another verse. And we was kind of getting good feedback. So I'm like, uh, no, I know what it was. So that's what it was. That's all Beautiful was going to be. And then what happened was a couple weeks later, Snoopy Blue called me out the blue like, cuz I, I got a verse for that blue shit. So me just trying to be, you know, a good sport, like, fuck it. The song is done. It's out. I wasn't really satisfied with the way I got this whole blue theme going on. And then Piper just gave me a regular verse either. But I wasn't looking for this record to be no record, so I was just going to let a record be out there that I was unsatisfied with, another mixtape record. But because Snoopy Blue had wrote a whole verse, when he went in the studio, to, came in the studio to do it, it just naturally on me, I wrote another verse. So now we got a three-verse record. That was the original remixed in order to say it's not the one with Piper on it. Now I want to ask about how uh, guys from maybe uh, the blue side might do a song with... Someone on the red side. You already did it with Blutafil when you had uh, Homeboy from Denver Lane. Yeah, as much as I yeah. want to take credit, man, it was Snoop and Shug. It was Ice Cube and Mac-10, or Dub C and Mac-10, because Ice Cube never, I don't want to attach that to Ice Cube, because he never attached that to himself. But I didn't start it. You know, it's been going on. But how do you feel? Uh, do you think that that's a positive thing? Uh, of course. I mean, that's a no. That goes without saying. Definitely. I think the more gangbanging is diluted is a positive thing. I'm black before all. Like I told you, I got three young men, black men that I'm raising. They're not gang members. They're not allowed to be. They're not going to be. I share my gangbang experience just for the knowledge of. I do not glorify it. And then when I say I don't glorify it, I mean I don't glorify the overall. But I do glorify some of my experiences throughout because there were a lot of challenges. And when you're presented with a challenge and you overcome it and you meet it with exceptional performance, you uh, develop some type of pride in that. Even if the actual activity was involving it downgrading, but now is your overall purpose. I know when I was having that mind frame that I was approaching certain situations. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Like and comment below to give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related videos to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and listen to our weekly podcast, The Gangster Chronicles, every Thursday. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.